Hey Internets, it's Jake and today on Mini Terrain Domain, I'm going to show you how to make overlays and other graphics for use in your Dungeons and & Dragons and other role-playing game live streams. In part one, we're going to focus just on building the overlay. In part two, I'm going to show you how to build off of what we've done in part one and create the remaining assets for your stream. Let's get started. Okay, as we get started, I want to say a couple of words real quick about using artwork in your live streams. Whatever you do, please respect the artists who create original photography or artwork. Always make sure that you secure the proper licenses and rights before using any artwork. The artwork you're going to see in the following tutorial has been taken from places such as pixabay.com and each piece of art is verified to have the proper non-attribution or attribution Creative Commons license. Always respect artists. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new document. Um, I'm going to be using 1920 by 1080. Uh, if you use a smaller resolution for your stream, such as 1280 by 720, you can use those dimensions, but know that 1920 by 1080 will scale up or down uh, in the same aspect ratio. You can plug those numbers in by pixel dimensions here, 1920 by 1080, landscape orientation, 300 DPI for higher resolution. I already have a preset, so I'm going to select that. Now, the first thing we're going to need is a piece of art I have grabbed from the aforementioned Pixabay site. A couple of different art choices here. I'm going to go with this one. Uh, it's a nice aesthetic for a Curse of Strahd or a similar game. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag that in to my artboard, drop it in place. This one happens to be the proper resolution, so I'm going to drop it there. The first thing we are going to do is figure out our overlay space. I'm going to show you how to set up a game for four players but you can add more boxes or change the sizes for your overlay as necessary based on the total number of players that you have. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a copy of this background layer, and I'm just going to make that invisible uh, by turning that layer off. I'm going to create a new layer up above this one. I'm going to select all, in this case, control A, and I'm going to create a stroke on this new layer. This stroke, I'm actually going to set it to be um, a color. Uh, for this one, I'm going to give it a uh, red color to match the Curse of Strahd theme. I'm going to set it at 25 pixels inside. Click OK. And... It's going to generate a thick box around there. Don't worry about that for right now. We're going to resize this. So now I'm going to hit Control D to deselect it. And I'm going to transform this. In Photoshop, that's Control T for free transform. I'm going to hold Alt and Shift so this scales into the center. And I'm just going to bring it down to a size that looks approximately like I can fit three of these across. We may need to adjust this in a moment and what we're going to do is we'll stop right about here and before we start making the other boxes we're going to add a couple of effects to this because i want this to stand out just a little bit this isn't required but i think this helps and should be considered a minimum a minimum design standard so i'm going to double click in the layer for the effects I'm going to add a simple single uh, black stroke to the outside edge at two pixels. I'm going to go here to my uh, gradient overlay, and I already have a neutral density overlay set. Um, it gives it a nice fade from top to bottom, and of course, uh, you can reverse that either way. I kind of like the... Uh, going in from the top to the bottom from dark to light. 
And then finally, we're going to add a drop shadow. Uh, it's real light. Um, you can play around with the settings to get the effect you like. When we do the cutout in a little bit, you'll see where this really comes into play. Then I'm going to hit OK and lock that in. Now I have a bounding box for a single player with all of the effects set on it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide those effects so that we can see our layers better. I'm going to make a copy of this. Here I'm using Control J and I'm going to hold Control Shift and I'm going to move to the left. And I'm going to move until this line is centered up approximately just eyeballing it and then i'm going to hit one two three four five i'm going to reselect layer one and we're actually going to start naming these as we go and we're going to call this um the center bottom it's really important to maintain your layers and layer titles or organization it'll make it a lot easier going forward we're going to call that center bottom and we're going to call this left bottom we we'll go back to center bottom hit control j again and control shift and we're going to drag that we're going to do the same thing in the opposite direction one two three four five i'm just eyeballing this getting it all approximate it doesn't have to be perfect uh, unless you want it to be perfect then you can do that. This is going to be center, or excuse me, going to be right bottom. And I like to organize the layers in a way that makes sense. So now we're going to take all three of these layers and I just shift click to select all three of them. I'm going to bring them down together. I'm holding control shift and using the arrow key and Gonna bring it down, leave a little bit of footer room. And then there we go. Now I'm gonna go to select the left bottom and the right bottom. And I'm gonna hit control J. I'm gonna rename these copies right off the bat so I don't lose track of what they are. We're gonna call this left top. And of course means this is going to be right top. Selecting both of these layers together, control, shift, up arrow, until we line up approximately there. One, two, three, four, five. That gives us approximate equal distance spacing on all of these boxes. Now, we have all of our boxes where we want. We do have a little bit of extra room on the left and right. So we are going to select first all of our frame layers. And I'm going to hit Control G and I'm going to group them. And I'm going to call them frames. Okay. So all of our frames are in there. With the group selected as a whole, I'm going to hit Control. T again for transform and I'm going to transform this entire layer and I'm going to hold alt and shift and just resize it until we get a little closer to the edges there that gives us slightly bigger windows which means that everybody is able to be seen much better in the final product you can adjust this up or down you can even take that center box here on the bottom if you're depending on your artwork, you can move that up to the top like I usually do. I chose this to let the castle be a focal point in here. So now that we have our boxes, our frames all set up, we can go ahead and open up the layers again. One of the things that I find actually works really good and it helps you to maintain the integrity of this is we can actually take the entire group I'm actually going to make a copy of it first by control J and I like to keep copies of everything so that we always have a backup for it. We're going to take and hide this one. 
And then I'm just going to hit, uh, I'm going to go in here and I am going to go into each one of these and hit W for magic wand. I'm going to select each area holding the shift key to add to it, left bottom, right top, left top. And we're going to go down here. Uh, this has this little down, little indicator down here. I need to actually rasterize this layer so that I can make changes to that background layer. The big change that we are going to do is hit delete. And I'm actually going to change my background layer real quick. To, we're going to select this. and We're going to put a medium gray in there. Uh, that helps for contrast as we're setting up the names. And then I'm just going to hit Control uh, D to deselect. And then Control Delete with the background layer selected. That fills in that whole layer. And you can kind of see now where I put the drop shadow on these boxes. That's going to translate through into the final overlay here. Now, you have your basic overlay. We need to add a couple of elements. Let's add... A title so we're going to switch this here to white and then we are going to we're going to just for the purposes of this i'm going to use a very generic very basic font uh this one's called ring bearer you'll see it a lot used in uh, various overlays promo images things like that and we are going to call this game a title you could just call it cursor strad whatever I'm going to call this, oops, uh, that's my mistake. Uh, we actually want to make sure that for this, we are on top here. Uh, now, I'm going to call this the Blood of the Raven. Good title. I will hit enter there. And then we're going to make this title a little bit bigger. I want to make sure your title has some contrast that it stands out. You may want to put branding for your channel in here. Uh, so you'll want to leave room for that as well. Uh, those things you can always add in over to the left, to the right, however you want to do that. We're just going to real quick make a couple of adjustments to this. Make the title look good. Um, we are going to set actually the whole thing to this size, set it to 30, and we'll adjust this to arbitrary 18. Same thing with these. This is more aesthetics. You can, you can play around with the title however you want. There we go. Now you notice that it does blend in a little bit with the background. So again, I like to take um, some effects now you could take what you've done here in the frames and we can right click and i'm going to copy the layer style and then i'm going to go up here to the title and i'm going to paste that layer style in and with the white letters it has added a slight effect it still doesn't quite stand out very well uh let's go ahead and we'll add that in there we're going to do one more effect just to make this stand out against the dark background. We're going to add a secondary stroke and I'm going to actually make it be our previous one was two. So we're going to make this one be four. We've already got our drop shadow. Everything's in there again. Titling you can do however you want. It's all about aesthetics. That's not um, critical, uh, but you do want it to look good. So now we've got our title, we've got our frames. Let's go into creating a, we're going to create the name tags for each of our characters. So we're going to create a, uh, on a new layer and right about here. And we're actually, what, what we could do is use the same effect. So we're going to duplicate that. We're going to go here. And we're going to type, uh, I like to go left alignment 
and we're gonna do player one and of course you would put uh actually we'll put uh we'll, we'll give these characters names uh and i'm just gonna make these up real quick so we're gonna call torben and we're gonna line that up and i'm just holding control and moving this around and then i'm gonna go here i'm going to copy my layer style i'm gonna paste it right here on top of this one now we've got torben and then um i'm gonna turn the gradient overlay off for that so that it's a little bit more readable and then i'm gonna take torben and i'm gonna do Control j and I'm going to change the alignment to right. Control shift, hold the arrow key down, keeping it in alignment. Bring it to this edge here. And we want to say what Torben is. Torben is a dwarf paladin. And then we're going to take this whole line here and we're going to reduce the size just a little bit. Uh, there we go. And now we have the name of the character and we have the name of their race and class. This, of course, is assuming a fantasy role playing game. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to take, we'll hide these effects layers again. And we're going to take Torben and Dwarf Paladin and we're going to create that as a group. We're going to call it Torben. Uh, you can call it by character name, player name, player one, player two, however you want to do that. And then we're going to copy it. Control J. And we're going to select this new one. And control Shift. And, or we can hold the Shift key down. And uh, the Control key and just drag it across. So we line it up. Just how we had the other one. This, up, this time, we just click in here, and now this is Valen, and hit enter, and then we're going to double click in here. Valen is an elf druid, we'll say. We enter that in. See how quick this goes once you have your base in there, and then we'll change the title of this to Valen, and then... I'm going to take both Torben and Valen and I'm going to duplicate both of them together. Control shift arrow keys down. See, this makes aligning everything a lot easier. And now we're going to go over here, just click into where it says Torben. And we're going to say that this is, um, this is Gale. And enter. Gale is a human uh rogue human rogue enter and then we're going to change the name of this from that to gale and then in the valen copy we'll change valen to um Parmax. Parmax. Okay. Enter. And Parmax is a um dragonborn uh wizard. And you can always if you if it feels a little crowded in here, you can play around with stacking Dragonborn and Wizard, changing the size, etc. Now we've got our Dungeon Master, so we're going to change first this to Parmax. And then we're going to take one of them. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Parmax, and I'm going to hit Control J, duplicate. Head on over here to there i'm going to open this i'm going to just change the name right now to dungeon master in this case 
uh, myself would be uh, Jake. And then there. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put Dungeon Master. There we go. There's all of our names. Select all of them. Control G. Names. Move this title back up to the top. Keeping that. Whoops. I accidentally put that inside. Grab it. Put it up on top. Outside of there. So now we have our names. We have our frames. And of course we're going to create a uh, duplicate of that. And we will hide that one. So we have copies of it. Now you're pretty much all set at this point. Uh, any other graphics you want to put in there, you can go ahead and do that. You can add social media links up at the top here. Some people like to have those things included. Um, but we're pretty much ready to create our overlay. Before you do that, though, you want to turn off your background. You want this to be transparent. This is just so that I can see the contrast, see how it's going to look. One of the reasons why we have the drop shadow behind here and the white boundary is you never know how light or dark your player's camera is going to be. So you want those names to stand out. Choose your colors and your effects accordingly. So first we're going to save our overall document, which we should have been saving, saving all along. I'm actually going to take all of this and I'm going to everything but the background. I'm going to group together in one big group. And I'm going to call this overlay. I'm going to hit control S to save the overall document. And we're going to call this fantasy. Stream asset. And we are going to actually click into our fantasy here and we are going to save that there. You could also call that master file, whatever, but because it's the Photoshop file, you know what it is. Now turn off your background. You have your transparency control shift S or save as, and we are going to call this blood of the Raven overlay we're going to change the type to png this is important for the transparency select save okay and we've just created our overlay if you were here just for the overlay congratulations you've learned how to make an overlay thank you for watching this tutorial i hope that you found it useful if you would like to continue on to part two, you can do so by clicking the link up in the corner or down below or wherever the link is these days. And we're going to show you how to build off of what we learned in part one and create the rest of your assets for your live stream. If you found this video useful and would like to continue seeing great content like this, please consider subscribing and following to Mini Terrain Domain on YouTube and Twitch. If you would like to become a supporter of Mini Terrain Domain and have a direct impact on these types of tutorials and this kind of content, consider supporting financially at patreon.com slash mini terrain domain. Thank you and have a great day. Mm -hmm.